Hi Mike, I wanted to reply to your post about uh, the problem of evil. Again, uh, I thought it was a thoughtful reply and I appreciate it, but uh, as you can probably anticipate, I, I don't think it uh, succeeds in ultimately dealing with the problem, so how about we get to the reasons why. First off, uh, your point about consequentialism. You say that uh, the ends justify the means for God, but, but that rule doesn't apply to us. And I'm curious, why the double standard? I and mean, it seems kind of hypocritical for God to hold us to a higher standard than he holds himself. But, uh, but even if it's not hypocritical, there's still a basic problem with the argument. Ends can only justify the means if there's no other means to that end which involves less suffering. But if God is all-powerful, then he could achieve that end without any suffering. Um, you probably know that uh, Immanuel Kant viciously criticized consequentialism. He said that using somebody as a means to an end was the most immoral thing that someone can do. But on your theodicy, God is using people who suffer evil for some consequential good. Well, if it's wrong for me to kill one innocent person to save five innocent people, then it's just as wrong for God to make some people suffer for the salvation of others. And that brings up the problem of the distribution of evil. Why do so many people have, some people have to suffer so much more than others? Why do children in Rwanda have to starve so I can appreciate my 50-inch plasma TV? That just doesn't seem fair. It's not just the existence of evil, it's the inequitable distribution of evil that creates a problem here. Um, Okay, moving on to the next point. Uh, the idea that this world is just a means to an end seems to me to be very trivializing of life. I want my life to matter for its own sake, not just because it serves as a segue to some other plane of existence. I don't want this life to just be a test. I want it to really be significant in its own terms. Um, next up, your impressionist painting analogy. I think that, that that's really just uh, just a horribly, horribly weak argument. It, 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 it fails to take evil seriously. I, I recommend that you go to the nearest neonatal oncology ward and you find a mother whose newborn baby is dying of cancer. You tell her that the pain she's going through is merely a lack of perspective. And if she could just take a step back and see the big picture, she would appreciate that. I think she would have some choice words for you. Uh, th that kind of abstract armchair response to the problem of evil can only be made by people who have lived a comfortable, sheltered life. If you want to deal honestly with a problem of evil, then you have to actually look evil in the eye and take it seriously. Next point. You say that because of the limitedness of the human mind, we're not able to see how evil is justified. But isn't the fact that God keeps the big picture from us itself evil? Uh, consider an analogy. If you had mistakenly thought your best friend had died, but I knew in fact she had not, wouldn't it be cruel of me not to enlighten you? Could I justify keeping you in pained ignorance by saying it's somehow important for you to go through for your own self-improvement or that you, you needed to suffer as a matter of logic so you could appreciate your friend when you learned she was alive? I don't think so. Um, it, it just seems evil that we don't know why all the evil is going on. So that makes it worse, not better. Um, you also talk about how the world is distinguished in terms of differences. And, and, and I assume there that you're sort of driving something from your sort of a Hegelian logic. I recall you said you're a fan of Hegel. And honestly, that, that every time I encounter Hegelian logic, it pains me. There's so many problems with Hegel's logic, I don't know where to begin. Um, suffice to say, Hegel's logic has been discarded by most professional philosophers in favor of the mathematical logic of people like Russell, Whitehead, and Gödel. Um, so, uh, no more about the, about the logic, but just about the basic theodicy that it applies. You don't seem to realize that that, that theodicy is going to abolish the idea of an absolute God and lead to some sort of Manichean theology. Uh, no being could possibly be all good on this the theodicy, since the idea of all good anything is incomprehensible. God needs to be at least somewhat evil, otherwise we could not meaningfully speak about him at all. Even if something needs an opposite to be comprehensible, why does that opposite of good have to be evil? Why can't it just be no good, the absence of good, or neutrality? That would certainly serve as a, a logical enough distinction for good. At best, at best, this point is a point of human psychology. In point of fact, we appreciate things in terms of their opposites. But a truly all-powerful God could surely create us with the ability to appreciate good without having to appreciate evil. So what you really need to do is what you've failed to do. You need to reconcile the existence of evil with an all-powerful God. Um, okay, now this next point, it's not something you actually said in your video, but you had it in your comments section up on the side, so I wanted to address it. Uh, you say, 
In a similar respect, we need down to understand up, south to understand north. In a world where there is no evil, or the memory of evil, there is no good, just like there is no direction north when you are standing on the North Pole, and no direction down when you are in outer space. Um, I don't think you realize you're throwing the baby out with the bathwater on this one. It sounds like you're saying that good and evil are relative. There is no absolute up or absolute down. It all depends on where you're standing. Likewise with north and south. These are just social conventions, things we invented so we could have a unified and organized cartography. I don't think you can say that good and evil are like down or, no uh, down or north or south without destroying the idea that God is all good. Uh, okay, final point. Even if the logical argument works, even if you're right that evil is logically necessary, you still haven't addressed the evidentiary problem of evil. Okay, so perhaps we need some evil, but do we really need this much evil? I mean, take a look around the world. Don't we have more evil than we actually need to appreciate the good? There's a, such a superabundance of evil in this world. Isn't some of it gratuitous? Superfluous? Do we honestly need each and every single piece of evil that befalls us? This just seems highly implausible. Um, so, for these reasons and more, I think that the, the, uh, your, your, your kind of dismissive response to the problem of evil uh, can't possibly succeed. Um, you know, I would, I would very much appreciate it, actually, if you would re reply. I think this is the, the, the third video of yours that I've replied to. And, you know, just, you don't have to do a video comment, but a, a text comment would be great. I'm curious if, you, if you're seeing these things, uh, what you think about them. Um, I hope that you find that I'm being charitable to you and, and fair um, and, 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 and treating you with due respect, um, uh, because I do think that you deserve it. Uh, so, uh, quick request here at the end, please. Uh, uh, get back to me. Hope all goes well with you. Take it easy. Bye.